So this is a 2024 Super Duty. This one is a 250 Power Stroke Diesel, but it's a Lariat, whereas mine's an XLT. But I noticed something interesting on this truck. Check out that payload, 2,800 pounds. That's uh, about 500 pounds more than my strips down XLT. I don't understand that. How are they how are they coming up with that number? And look, it doesn't have doesn't have overload springs or anything in there, so it doesn't have like the high capacity package or whatever they call it. It's just a standard 250. It's a Lariat. It's got more stuff on it than my truck, so it should be heavier than my truck. The payload should be lower, but instead it's 500 pounds higher. Interesting. These little guys came running right up to me a minute ago. No, I'm absolutely not your mama. <laughs> I guess they're looking for her though. So I finally got the Mustang back. I don't know if I even shot a video about this, but this car has been gone for like four months. We had a really nice stretch of weather back in February. The car had been sitting here in the garage all winter. So I thought, hey, I'll get it out and drive it to work. Well, mistake on my part because I got T-boned right here in this door that day. Well, that was just a huge bummer because we were getting ready to go into the spring season, man, and all the nice weather was coming and the car ended up going to the body shop for four months. But anyway, it's finally back. Body shop did a great job on it. I drove it down the road with this window up. Didn't have any uh, signs of air leaks or anything. The door has that nice quality thunk to it like a brand new car. Listen, just nice and tight. Like I said, it sounds like a brand new door. Now this one works better than the other one because <laughs> it's got age on it. But so happy to have this Mustang back because it is summertime almost car show season. All right. So in the last video, I got a lot of interesting comments from you guys. A lot of people said you just need to get rid of that diesel truck. That would fix the problem and get rid of the headaches. Don't really need a heavy duty diesel truck anyway, right? And those were some valid points, I guess. You know, point taken. I asked you guys for your opinions and you gave them to me. So thank you. Uh, having said that, I've been milling it over and here's the problem. So this Super Duty, you know, I've had this truck almost a year. I gave $43,000 for this truck. That's what I paid for. It's 43. Now, granted, it's five years old, but like I've showed you, it's almost like a new one. The body's in excellent condition. You know, it's not all beat up or anything. The ch uh, chassis and the frame of the truck looks brand new. I have serviced the thing front to back, so it, it has no problems, no issues. It starts up and runs like a brand new one every day. This truck does exactly the same thing that a 2024 model would do. Um, it gets the same work done uh drives the same i mean maybe it's not quite as fancy as the new ones but point is it's a great truck and i gave 43 for it and i've had it almost a year so i've paid a lot of that down so here's the thing i went and i just for kicks and giggles since i posted that last video i went and i looked just to kind of see what's out there you know what kind of uh half ton trucks are out there that would do what i need to do and how much do they cost? <laughs> and it was kind of interesting. So that's the really tough thing about it is, you know, since we've got an F-250 here, let's, let's compare it to an F-150. So I've been kind of looking around, you know, just again to see what's out there. And what I'm finding is the new F-150s, like I would configure it, crew cab, four by four, a couple of options, start in the low 50s and go up from there everybody knows if you want to you can option a truck to a hundred thousand dollars these days it's crazy but just you know a decently equipped xlt truck like this for example uh low 50s you know in that ballpark i can get a lightly used one that's come in off of lease you know a truck that somebody's put 20 or thirty thousand miles on over the last couple of years you know like a 21 model 22 model f-150 I can get one of those in the forty to forty-five thousand dollar range. Okay, so pretty much exactly what I paid for this truck. 
So then just for kicks and giggles, I decided to look at the mid-size trucks again. You know, we've talked about this before, the mid-size trucks and the full-size trucks in the half ton category, the payload ratings are really similar on them. The towing ratings are pretty close on them, depending on how the full size is configured. So there's really not a lot of difference in terms of the work they can do anymore. I've had a lot of full size and mid size trucks on this channel over the years, and I've done a lot of work with all of them. Uh, and I got through, but hey, you know, like a new Gladiator, a new Ranger, a new Colorado, a new Frontier, uh, equipped the way, configured the way that I would have to have it. I'm looking at like mid forties on that, you know? So, uh, it looks like everything that I would be interested in would be the same price or more as what I gave for this truck. And obviously this is just a lot more truck, more power, uh, more fuel economy, you know, with the stock wheels and tires on here. This thing's getting phenomenal fuel economy. We'll talk about that more in just a minute because people have asked about that. Uh, more space in the bed, the six and three quarter foot bed, so I can put more back there. Uh, it's just a more substantial truck. You know, when I go tow that enclosed trailer, yeah, I can get away with a smaller truck. I've done it before. You've seen on this channel over the years, we've towed enclosed trailers even bigger than that one, fully loaded with mid-sized trucks. And you can do it. But, you know, if something were to go wrong with the trailer brakes, this truck right here would do a much better job of getting the trailer stopped than a little half-ton mid-size truck would do. So this is just safer to tow with. It's more comfortable because this big diesel engine can go to top overdrive gear and just stay there and cruise. Um, you know, I just can't really see any good justification to get rid of this truck yet because of a couple of issues that I could address with just a few thousand bucks. Financially, I'd be way ahead to just keep this truck, throw a couple of thousand, uh, eh, maybe like three or four thousand bucks at a couple of the issues here that, you know, the fuel system and the parts under the truck that make it unreliable and just address those things. And then this truck would last me for a long time because I don't put a lot of miles on my trucks. I've got the Mustang back now to drive in the summertime. I'm putting about 12,000 miles a year or so on my trucks. Not a lot of miles. So something like this, a diesel like this, if I address just those couple of issues, this thing would last me forever. Uh, and like I said, I can do, here's the other thing. When, when I was thinking about the future, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I bought this truck in the first place is thinking about the future. No, I don't tow over 10,000 pounds with this truck right now. But here in the next few years, life's going to be changing. You know, my son's going to be 18 next summer. Uh, I'm going to be retiring. The wife's going to be retiring within the next three or four years. There's a good possibility I could buy a real camper, a bigger camper, you know, and if I've got this truck in the stable, then I've got that part taken care of. I don't have to worry about my tow rig, right? Whereas with a smaller half ton, it would really limit me on what kind of camper I could buy in the future. So here's another consideration. Sometimes out here, I have a need to rent a piece of equipment to get a job done, right? I mean, you probably remember that last summer when I bought this truck, the very next week, I was hauling an aerial boom with it. Uh, sometimes it's just handy to rent a trenching machine or an excavator or a piece of aerial equipment or something to get a job done out here. Uh, well, if you show up at a rental facility in a truck like this, nobody thinks anything of it. You know, they'll rent you whatever you want. You know, but if you were to show up out there with a mid-size truck or maybe even a full-size half-ton truck, you're going to get some attention, you know, and a lot of places around here won't even let you rent certain pieces of equipment with a lighter duty truck like that. So, you know, that's another consideration. Having a truck like this means that if I need to rent a piece of equipment for a job, you know, I don't have to worry about it and I don't have to pay somebody else to bring it to me. I can just go get it, right? So... That's pretty nice too. Anyway, there's a lot of reasons why I bought this truck. There's a lot of reasons to keep this truck. And the fact of the matter is I've just spent a lot of money on this truck already. You know, I completely refreshed the suspension with new shocks, all new front end linkages and parts. I serviced this thing front to back, all new fluids, new filters and everything. Uh, I got a cool bed cover back there now. Those awesome wheels and tires that I've been reviewing for you guys that have been working out great on the truck, by the way. So I've spent some money on it too. I love these lights. They're still working great to spot those deer on these rural roads that I live on. Or if you're just slow speed off road, 
These are nice for lighting up the sides so you can see where your tires are about to go. So I love those. You know, I've put some money in this truck. And to be honest with you, I just really like this truck. I do. It drives pretty good for a, for a big truck. You know, they've got the throttle response and the transmission programming dialed in perfect, in my opinion. And it handles pretty good for a big truck. No, the ride quality is not the best. And no, it's not a whole lot of fun to park when you go to Walmart. But, you know, at the end of the day, this truck's just got a lot going for it. So all that to say, yeah, in some ways it kind of makes sense to maybe just get rid of this truck to alleviate those concerns that I had. But at the end of the day, I think it just makes more financial sense and just more sense in general for me to keep this truck and just throw a few thousand bucks at it to alleviate those concerns that I've got with it. If I do something with that fuel system and those parts under the truck that kill the fuel economy, and are just annoying this truck will probably last me forever all right so like i said some people have been asking about the wheels and tires what's up with the wheels and tires so let me explain all right so obviously these are the factory wheels uh you saw these a few weeks ago because i was doing some touch-up work on them uh yeah i have not scrubbed the tire yet i got some overspray on the tire which will come off you just got to scrub it but i haven't got around to that yet anyway point is why are these back on the truck right now well here's the deal uh i've been thinking about doing something with the fuel system on this truck and maybe a couple of other parts like we've been talking about the last two videos when i do that i'm gonna have to drop the truck drop off the truck at the shop and they probably will park it outside because they've got a lot of trucks in there they're going to be working on i don't want this truck to be sitting outside for a week or two weeks however long it takes them to get to it and get the work done with those nice wheels and tires on it I uh, just don't want to take a chance on rolling by there one day and seeing my truck on blocks. So that's the main reason why I've got these factory wheels and tires back on here temporarily, just for a few more weeks until I get this fuel system uh, thing straightened out, uh, if I decide to do that. Uh, so the other thing is, while these are on here, I'm taking this opportunity to get some data because I'm going to shoot a video on real world fuel economy. Yes, it does matter. Don't care what size your truck is. It does matter because fuel economy hits everybody in the pocket. So I'm gonna do a real world video on what kind of fuel economy I'm getting out of this truck, bone stock, as you see it here, versus when I throw those 35 inch tires on here. What's the real difference? You get a lot of people throwing numbers around online, but I'm gonna throw some actual data at you here in a few weeks, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. But that's what's up. The Falcon AT4s did not go away. I still have them, and they're going to go back on the truck very soon. This is just temporary uh, while I'm, uh, you know, not in possession of the truck, maybe while I'm getting that fuel system taken care of. In fact, here they are stacked up in the barn here. Um, and when I took them off the truck, I put some labels on here denoting which corner of the truck they came off of so that when I put them back on here in a couple of weeks, I can go ahead and do a cross rotation on them, kill two birds with one stone. So that should work out pretty nice. Question is what to do with these Yokohama Geolander XAT tires. I mean, they still got lots of life left in them and uh, I'd really like to keep running these on down, get my money's worth out of them and do some more reviews, long-term reviews on them. Hmm. Maybe what we could do is put them on that F-150 down there. Uh, you know, we've pretty much got that thing done. That's an 05 F-150 my son's going to be driving. And we've been through that thing front to back. It's a pretty nice truck now. Uh, and, you know, it's got 18-inch wheels on it. So maybe, just maybe, we could throw those Yokohamas on it. Yeah, so I guess that's about all I got for today. I just wanted to kind of follow up on that last video that I posted you know, it does kind of annoy me that you've got some things you have to spend money on to make these diesel trucks more reliable. You know, that engine was $9,000 upcharge when that truck was new. It should be ready to go when you buy the thing, you know, but such is life. You know, these automakers cut corners wherever they can and that CP4 fuel pump, that's exactly what it was. It was corner cutting. Because uh, if you look at the CP4 compared to the CP3, you can see where they cut a lot of material out of the CP4 and they made it to where it's easier and cheaper to manufacture them, to mass produce them. That was the whole point. Um, so that's just the way that it goes. But 
I can take care of those things easy enough, right? All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Got to go out here and get some yard mowing done tonight while the weather's nice. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.